we can be taken advantage of too. We could be among the compatible left without knowing it. You could be a tool of the owning and work, uh, the owning and ruling classes. You could be a tool of, of capitalism. You could be a tool of imperialism and of global fascism abroad and domestically without realizing it. You could say you're an anti-capitalist, but you can end up being a tool of capitalism if you don't have a proper understanding. Uh, the holodomer was not real. Again, like the West wants you to believe that what Russia is doing right now in Ukraine is imperialism, but what the United States has been doing since at least 2014 or 2013 isn't imperialism. It's like if you hate imperialism, where's that energy for calling out the West's imperialism? At that point, you got to be like, all right, yeah, they got me good. I don't know how they did it, but the West did it to me again. They, you know, they, they did a weapons of mass destruction to me again. They got me good. You know, you just got to admit it. But of course, liberals never take the L. That's why I don't make content for them. That's why I literally make revolutionary content. Content that challenges the, uh, the interests of the ruling classes, the owning and ruling classes. Content that challenges capitalism in all its forms. Imperialists, fascists, reactionaries. Comrade Perenni says, there is no capitalism without capitalists. There is no imperialism without imperialists. I'm making content that also challenges what I consider to be the compatible left. I do not make content for the compatible left. I make content that challenges it. You may be wondering, Dan, well, what's a compatible leftist? That's a good question. A compatible leftist is a liberal who claims to hate capitalism often, but usually hates communism more. They often say they hate capitalism and capitalists, but they often hate communists more than they hate capitalists. They hate fascists, but they usually hate communists more. They hate war, but they actually hate agreeing with principled anti-war communists more than they hate war itself. The compatible left are the anti-communist left. Many compatible leftists are just social democrats uh, or reformists who claim to be anti-capitalists, yet often hate and actually existing socialist countries more uh, because of these vague notions of things like, uh, I don't know, gulags as these unimaginable like death camps purely at the service of Stalin, the evil dictator, right? Even though, I don't know, maybe you know this, but the, the CIA has admitted in now unclassified documents that they knew Stalin wasn't a dictator. They knew this. They know this. And for my history nerds, what I'm talking about right now, the compatible left, they've got SPD energy. Question becomes, why do I make content that challenges the compatible left? Why would I do this? Why do I do this on my channel? Well, the TLDR here is that I'm a recovering compatible leftist. Um, I regret being one. I see how the compatible left and the rhetoric are dangerous because they serve fascist and capitalist interests, even though they say they don't. So to not see this was to be a baby brain. And I was a baby brain. Okay? So I'm now making content. And back when I started making content, I was still, I think, of this baby brain variety. I thought I was a leftist, but I had to really do some soul searching. What is leftism? Right? So I'm making content now that would have blown my mind about two, three years ago when I started. It's because I was a compatible leftist. I could probably go back to some of my VODs and see some really bad takes. I was sort of like scared of people with like the hammers and sickles in their bios, right? I probably would have been one of those people that would have believed everything I read about the Soviet Union. Um, you know, I just didn't know any better. Uh, I, which again, wasn't much. 
I didn't read much about the Soviet Union because I just didn't read much. <laughs> I guess I was a dumbass. So that's what actually makes it easy for propagandists to sort of like fill a vacuum of knowledge with empire's narratives. <clears throat> Um, I tricked myself into voting for blatant interventionists, thinking things like, this is the most important election of my life. Things like, uh, Republicans are bad, so therefore, Democrats must be better? Thinking things like, uh, I can't vote for ABC candidates, I have to vote for the Dem, you know? Thinking things like, well, Republicans hold back progress, so I gotta vote for the Dem. Things like that. And while, you know, that's true. You know, people like Republicans do hold back progress. It doesn't acknowledge that Democrats support U.S. interventions. Interventions, right? Democrats very much love an intervention. Uh, and it's not like U.S. bombs or those of U.S. allies avoid LGBTQIA people. It's not like we've got woke bombs over here. A fuck out of here with your woke bombs. As I reflect on the time that I was a compatible leftist, much of my analysis and, con and like my conclusions about the world, they were just based on a lack of awareness and or like misunderstanding of the facts. I'm going to count on this hand instead. So for instance, I couldn't even point out Ukraine on a map. I didn't understand the countless coups that the West has done. Uh, I wasn't yet convinced that NATO is bad. My compatible leftist conclusions were based on a lack of class consciousness and analysis. I was a proletarian without that awareness because I didn't understand properly the class dynamics. It was based on a lack of theory, aka no dialectical understanding. I was never around people who read Marx and engaged with Marxist ideas. And I was too scared, I guess, to engage with it myself. I don't know. Right? I don't know why I never read Marx. Um, and it's also based on a lack of time to, like, sit and figure all the stuff out like I have been able to the past two years streaming. I've been, I've been too, I was too busy living the, the neoliberal nightmare without even being able to name it as such. You know, in the past two, three years, I've had to relearn so many things about the world. Uh, I didn't even understand properly what capitalism, what socialism or communism were, or what fascism, what neoliberalism, uh, liberalism, neoconservatism. I didn't know what these things were at the beginning of this journey. Maybe you've been with me this whole way, and you've seen me evolve. It's been a fascinating journey, right? All of these things I couldn't even define. I couldn't even define capitalism, but I called myself an anti-capitalist. So, if I'm going to call myself an anti-capitalist, shouldn't I be able to identify what capitalism is? Uh, be able to identify its manifestations? And, uh, and uh, be able to identify, perhaps, an alternative system that would better serve the people? If I'm going to call myself a leftist? I don't have to have all the answers in the world, but I should have some of these answers. So, folks, when I was a compatible leftist, my... My conclusions about the world, it was based on vibes, homies. I was going by vibes. Um, I was an unwitting shill of neoliberalism. And I claimed to hate capitalism, but I couldn't identify neoliberalism if it were hitting me in the face. I was a compatible leftist. So, I'm like thinking now, in terms of, like, myself and the content that I make here and to other progressive or, like, leftist content creators, if our content doesn't challenge the compatible left, which is a pervasive and dangerous right-wing adjacent ideology, should we consider ourselves leftists? If our lack of, of analysis makes it so that the right-wing can make use of us, then what kind of a leftist are we? Similarly, another way we can be of use to the right wing is if our instinct, instinct is to defend the compatible left from critiques and attacks from the revolutionary left. 
This is another reason why in actually existing socialist spaces, we cannot nurture the compatible left or those whose knee-jerk reaction is to defend it from attacks from the revolutionary left. So, I I'm realizing now that I'm going to have to, like, continue to force this contradiction. I'm going to have to continue to go after the hey, compatible gosh. left. And I think it's going to piss off a lot of people. Precisely because a lot of people have this kind of compatible left ideology. They think they're morally right as well. And I know what that's like. I used to feel that way, right? So because of this, as I engage with these folks, the compatible left, I have to like remind myself that I was recently a compatible leftist and that folks deserve as much patience as I did when I was one. Which is to say, I don't really know how much. <laughs> May not be that much, to be honest. Not Maybe not, not that much patience. Uh, I was on the compatible left precisely because I was unwilling to work towards having a material understanding of the world. <laughs> Why should I ha have patience with people who aren't willing to do the work? I was going off of vibes. I needed someone to check me, and I never did. I never did until I seriously listened to people with a material and dialectical understanding of the world. There's no way to convince liberals that they've been tricked into supporting another war on behalf of empire because liberals and the compatible left, they have an unfalsifiable set of opinions and an ideology keeps them from a material understanding of just about anything geopolitically. So I'm, I'm like sort of like wondering if what's going to happen here as I continue to, you know, force that contradiction. To the surface. You know, I'm gonna continue to get counterattacks from these from these people. Um I, I know not to take it personally, because other people making similar critiques also get attacked. A lot of people with a compatible left understanding, and a lot of people having that kind of understanding is also one of the main reasons we gotta go after it. You can't just identify, you know, a problem in the room and then just ignore it. It's a problem because there are so many of them who hold this way of thinking. So, if we're supposed to be serious political people, we should be able to identify that the compatible left support the interests of the owning and ruling classes and capitalism via their explicit or their tacit support of imperialism and the, and the military-industrial complex. They support the enemy, yet are convinced they stand against it. This contradiction must be brought to the surface in order to be resolved. <clears throat> and that's why I go after certain kinds of content creators. That's why I make the kind of content that I make. Um, that's why I don't Huddle what I consider to be compatible leftist takes. Or takes that resemble a narrative um, from an empire apologist. Uh, you know, or, or one that can't be, you know, one that we couldn't discern from it. If someone's making an empire apologia in my chat, I'm going to call it out. If we can't tell the difference between your talking point and Empire Apologia, that's a red flag. All right. This is the I Dan Simpson Show with I Dan Simpson. We make revolutionary content, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, Love that was my face. monologue. How'd I do? You don't know these Neo thingies. That's fine. Anything that I've come to learn, you can learn too. And I think it's really important for us to know that if we don't have a proper understanding of things, we can be taken advantage of, too. We could be among the compatible left without knowing it. You could be a tool of the owning and, work, uh, the owning and ruling classes. You could be a tool of, of capitalism. You could be a tool of imperialism and of global fascism abroad and domestically without realizing it. You could say you're an anti-capitalist, but you could end up being a tool of capitalism if you don't have a proper understanding.